Well, welcome to this week's worship service. Just a little word of introduction. I'm Pastor John Trump. I like to get my Starbucks coffee sometimes on the way to church. I go drive through, and it's nice. But it's interesting. Starbucks used to be and used to claim it wanted to be your third place of community, your third place of gathering. There's home, work, and then they wanted Starbucks to be the third place you went to gather with friends and family with, or friends and colleagues or whatever. But now it's fascinating. They're just almost all drive through It's almost everybody just goes drive through They don't stay. Well, our church offers video uh, worship services, and that's meant for those who can't make it and maybe to spread the word to others. But ultimately, we hope you end up with us with us in community here in this place, uh, worshiping in community, not just, you know, driving through, but dwelling with us. This week we're going to start a series on the sixth chapter of John, and in it we're going to hear about how Christ feeds the multitude. The video worship, recorded worship that John does for us and we put together, wow, it's just fabulous. It really serves a great purpose, and we're so happy about it. We're going to continue it. The one thing we can't do with the video service, though, is the sacrament, is the meal. Just like Jesus fed that multitude on the hillside, 5,000, well, we try to feed people here with the miraculous food of Christ. So I hope you can make it for the miraculous meal here or wherever you are, if you're watching this in another town or whatever, that you can go and receive the sacrament. So enjoy the service. If you're watching this home, you can do so with a cup of coffee and enjoy the worship. May God be with you and bless you this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Blessed be the Trinity, Holy Trinity, one God, the God of man and the God of miracles, the God of mercy, amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there's enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We follow shepherds not of your choosing. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us in this world in all its need with a life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Hello to the children and everyone at home today. In today's gospel lesson, Pastor Trump is going to read a story that many of you are familiar with, the feeding of the 5,000. You remember how all of the people were gathered to see and hear Jesus and there was no food for them. And there was also a little boy who had five loaves of bread and two fish 
And the boy shared what he had, and Jesus blessed the food and gave it to all the people. And there were 12 baskets of food left over after, after everyone had had all that they could eat. This was a miracle. Because of Jesus, there was enough for everyone. Jesus calls us today to be part of the miracle. This past week at Bible school, the children decorated bags like this one and took them home and filled them with things like food and other things that people could use who are experiencing homelessness. Um, they made extra bags for us here at church and uh, those who are gonna be in person worshiping today could pick one up. And also you at home, if you would like a bag, please call the church office and we will get one to you and you would fill it with things. We've got goldfish crackers and, and applesauce and some pop tarts and uh, other kinds of crackers and things that's, that people could use who are facing homelessness. Because of Jesus' love working through us, there is enough for everyone. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food for the first fruits to Elijah, the man of God. 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elijah said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them. They ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. A reading from Ephesians. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are rooted, being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him whom by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ever ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever, amen. The word of the Lord. gospel according to John. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a crowd, large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? 
He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now, there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, the disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Yogi Berra, the famous Yankee player known for his witticisms, Yankee Bear went to his favorite pizza parlor after a game. The cook asked the all-star catcher if he wanted his pizza cut into six or eight pieces. Yogi said, you had better make it six. I can't eat eight. So it is with the sixth chapter of John. There are two kinds of traveling vacations you can take. One is where you go from spot to spot quickly, taking in a little bit of each locale, or you can stay in one place for a while, diving deeply into the community or the culture and try to really meet some people. We're going to dwell in the sixth chapter of John for five weeks and hopefully really get to know it. And the good news in it, and hopefully not get tired of it. I mean, that's my job as your tour guide to help you see new things each week. These are the assigned gospel texts for us and it i got to admit, it would have been easier probably to bounce between the Old Testament and the Epistle and move around and, and not just dwell with the five weeks on John, but I thought this could be challenging and very rewarding for us as a community. And yes, I want to encourage you each and every week and each and every one of you to read this chapter of John, the sixth chapter of John, every week. Reread it every week. Take it in, grow in it. This is an opportunity. Now, as you heard, John 6 begins with a really good story. Actually, kind of two good stories. As we move forward, we're going to get into the typical taffy-like language of John. You know what I mean? The language of this gospel that's tough to chew on, that has Jesus talking in riddles and double talk with lots of people, maybe including us, not understand what he is actually talking about. The Gospel of John, probably more than all the Gospels, relies on the fact that we, the audience, the reader, the listener, know more than the people in the story. Hold on to that, okay? It's important. We know more than the people in the story. This is, is, of course, a very basic tool of drama. It provides tension and even, at times, humor. And the Jesus we encounter in the Gospel of John, more than in the other Gospels, is a is an all-knowing, um, all aloof Jesus who asks questions knowing full well what the answers will be and what the answers he'll get, and questions meant to probe and to unsettle people. And we get some of that even in the start of this chapter, even though this is the part with the good story that begins everything. These miracles, both of them, are the, are the setup to the rest of the chapter and the encounters that follow. We heard the story. The story of the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, and we've heard this in other Gospels. They're slightly different in each one, but also very similar. This is the one with the boy with the five barley loaves and the, and the two fish. In this one, Jesus instantly 
said, is said to be the one, he is the one who serves the bread and fish rather than the disciples. The gospel writer of John tells the story with Jesus fully in charge. From the very start when he asked Philip, where are we to get enough to feed this crowd in order to test him? We are told Jesus is in charge here. We heard what follows. Now, here I have to admit I'm beholden to a, a commentary I read on this passage. Here, there, uh, there is something about the way John tells his story that the people who heard, first heard John's version of the story, as he told it, would have probably recognized it more readily, readily than we might recognize something in it. John tells it in a way to point out things that occurred on that grassy plain with those thousands in ways that even those present probably did not notice. The people who heard John tell the story maybe stopped and said, wait, haven't we heard something like this before? What they're hearing again in a new way is the Exodus story. You know, the escape from, from Egypt and the flight through the desert. The story of God bringing the people of Israel through the desert and providing for them on the way. When the people left Egypt, what did they celebrate? The Passover. Well, this feeding of the 5,000 takes place right near the time of the Passover. Jesus, like, just like in the desert when the people are tested regarding their faith, Jesus tests Philip and his faith. And just like in the desert, God, via Jesus, the new Moses, provides miraculous bread for all. And just like in the desert, Jesus commands that all the leftover be gathered up so that none may be wasted. And notice that just like Moses, Jesus goes up the mountain. God is being revealed. And later in the story, in our series, the people will grumble just like they did in the wilderness. And let's not forget the walking on the sea. And the, Jesus overcomes the sea just as did Moses as the people escaped Egypt. And the disciples suddenly crossed the sea just as did the people of Israel. This meal, this meal, especially as John tells it, is meant to remind them of the Exodus and to proclaim that this is a new Exodus. Maybe, maybe even the people in the story who ate the food did get it in a way, I wonder, because remember, the Exodus was a moment of national liberation, of rescue, of the beginning of Israel as a nation, and maybe this is why they want to take him and make him king to crown him. They think he is clearly the one who will lead them from their weak position in this world, like the Israelites were in slavery in Egypt, from their poverty of power to a wealth of might. But this is not to be so. Jesus refuses the offer. Because this is not the liberation that he has in mind, a liberation, a liberation that is limited in time and scope. Just as the feeding in the wilderness was limited in time and scope. Just as the feeding by Jesus of this crowd was limited in time and scope. He will not be limited in time or scope. They are called, as are those to whom John is writing, as, we are, as are we, to instead see Jesus as the very embodiment of God's glory, love, and word, and not see a king, a political or military figure, who might serve their desires. But forgive the crowds, because, oh, we might say, we want to say, oh, we know more than they do, and we would not have done the same. We would have recognized the true Jesus. Yet when we are honest, we know that we also want to have a glory, a Jesus, a Savior that fits into our assumptions and our goals in life. Even the best of goals and assumptions Maybe we want a Jesus that will provide for our material needs, or maybe we want a more nationalistic Jesus, or maybe we want a more judgmental Jesus than we get. How often do we fail to see the depths of what God is doing? Because we are focused only on what serves our immediate desires and our immediate needs, we fail to realize how graciously God is acting among us for our sake and for the sake of the whole world. We only see partially and well, in distorted ways. We need the continuing word of Jesus and the gift of himself, yes, in bread and wine, if we are to move more deeply into the glory of God. 
This is what the crowds need as well. Though it will take all of chapter 6 to tell the story. What we need is the presence of the living Christ, which we boldly proclaim is made known to us in word and sacrament, as well as community and love that we share. We need to hear the words, it is I, just as the disciples did in the boat, or more accurately, they hear, I am. He says to them, I am. Just as Moses heard God say, I am who I am, he is saying, it is God who is with you. This is God with them and God with us. In word and sacrament, God says to us, I am. In the bread and the wine, in the word, in community, God is revealed to us as surely as God was revealed to all on the hillside and to the apostles on the sea and to the people of Israel in the desert. And we do know more than those in the story. We know the cross. We know the resurrection. We know the glory of God is revealed in the storm and it will be fully revealed as the sky is darkened and the storms form over the cross of Christ. In the storm and through the storm of the cross, the world is brought to salvation. In the midst of the storm, the storm on the sea and the storm of the cross, and indeed in all the storms of our lives, in our hunger and in our fill, God continues to be the I am, the very presence of God. God is not what I want, but rather God who God is, the I am of mercy, the I am of grace, the I am of life. I am that God speaks to us this very day in word and sacrament, the I am that the world or our hobbies or our lifestyles or our blessings cannot provide. The I am of the goodness and the full life of God, which, which we will explore further as we journey with him, with the disciples and with the crowds, even with those who seem to not understand in the weeks ahead. I hope you won't jump ship now. Amen. <laughs> And now let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Holy Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church. Bless the ministries of our Richland and Lexington County congregations. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture crops grown for the nourishment of your people and inspire us to conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who govern, cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. We pray for our president and Congress, our governor and legislature, our county councils and school boards, and our mayors. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger for sustenance and learning are fed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those bound down, bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing, especially for all of those we lift before you now, either aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who serve in uniforms, especially those serving far from home in the cause of peace and those fighting wildfires. We pray for police officers, paramedics, and firefighters as they respond to emergencies and sometimes life and death circumstances. Give them wisdom and discerning hearts as they carry out their duties on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly, deepen our resolve to use the time, skills, and financial resources that you have entrusted to us to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance and inspire us to give according to our ability rather than our inclination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died as you sustained them through all their days, so dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with Andrew and all the saints, the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. And now let us go in peace, remember the poor, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.